ஹலோ குட் மார்னிங் அண்ட் தேங்க்யூ ஃபார் த ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி டு ப்ரெசென்ட் திஸ் ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் டாபிக் இன் ஃப்ரெண்ட் ஆஃப் எனக்கு ஆகஸ்ட் காதரி டுடே ஐ ஆம் ப்ரெசென்டிங் இன் ஃப்ரெண்ட் ஆஃப் யூ த ஹெல்த் கேர் சிஸ்டம் ஸ்ட்ரெங்தனிங் இன் இந்தியா அண்ட் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர்மேஷன் ஆஃப் எமர்ஜென்சி மெடிசின் ஓவர் எ டிகேட் எ கேர்லா எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ஐ ஆம் டாக்டர் வேணுகோபால் Uh, basically i am an emergency uh, basically i am an anesthesiologist later turned to be an emergency physician and working at uh, prestigious institute aster mims calicut aster mims calicut is situated in mid kerala the district kori kod and the kerala is the state which is located the southmost part of india in 2007 i single handedly started an emergency department and the, from there we started a transformation of a indian casualty into an emergency system and uh, when i am starting into a, a, a formal training program in collaboration with the international university george washington university the emergency medicine was not recognized in india by medical council of india so this session i am covering the stories that how we we could uh, overcome the crisis Uh, of the covid second wave in kerala and also i'll share another story of the plane crash disaster management that we did in calicut in in last year and also i will share like the training and empowerment or a decade which which created an impact on the patient care system in this locality and also i'll share few out of box Com- and the community based activities which really made uh, emergency medicine uh, in uh, a palpable one and an invisible one in this locality <clears throat> so in fact that the covid second wave uh, started in mid march of 2021 and it is uh, reached its peak in may and it is continued over Uh, over june and uh, bit of july <clears throat> and uh, uh, there are certain special situation is existing in kerala uh, as far as the covid spread is concerned and the, these challenges include kerala has got uh, highly th- or the thickly populated and it's a small state holding 35.8 million people and uh, our population density is 860 people per square meter a square kilometer and uh, in the last decade the elderly population has uh, there's a uh, population is has been growing rapidly and uh, another alarming things like 70% of this population or the elderly populations are with the comorbidities like uh, diabetes asthma heart disease hypertension etc and another thing in kerala we have more than 4 lakh palliative care patients and uh, something very specific for the second wave is concerned that uh, our vaccination rate was below 20% at the time of covid uh, second wave and maybe the rapid spread is due to the delta variant and also like some of the breach in the social vaccination strategy in the state <clears throat> so the best side of the uh, best side of the kerala healthcare system is the uh, huge number of hospitals like more than 1700 hospital 12 medical colleges and uh, availability of uh, nearly 8000 icu beds then three, nearly 2000 more than 2500 ventilators etc in this background uh, how that uh, aster mims played a pivotal role while handling the covid-19 second wave crisis <clears throat> our medical icu has got a capacity of 28 bed of this 15 bed we converted as the isolation beds for the in uh, in the 
COVID uh, treatment. We also added to ECMO unit in medical ICU. More than that, the <clears throat> major changes what we made in in the in uh, under emergency department. In emergency medicine, our capacity is 28 bed. But this 28 bed out of the 28 bed, all the 20 bed we reserved for COVID management. More than that we added another 60 beds to this uh, 28 beds. So altogether we made 30 beds. These 60 beds are uh, two makeshift, makeshift ICUs uh, with a full ventilator capacity that we made in the car park area. Similarly, we also constructed a field hospital of a capacity of uh, 30 beds. And altogether, uh, Calicut Emergency Department which act as a small hospital inside the hospital. So also we did a rigorous manpower augmentation by recruiting more consultant and also like rigorous training for the undergraduate MBBS doctors and also diverted the DNP residents from other department and also recruited new nurses, EMS and ambulance assistants. So looking at the patient flow in the second wave in the March, April, May, uh, emergency department, acute care units or ICU units uh, managed to 92 patients and also our total patient flow in these three months is 6,297 and uh, looking at that ED, ED patient age profile, 94 percent of the ED ICU patients are above the age of 60 and almost all, that is 99 percent of these patients having that severe comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease, CKD, COPD and cancers. Very alarming, 99 percent of these people did not receive even a single dose of vaccine. So, uh, again, like uh, ED is also managed another uh, 40 bedded uh, first line treatment center, and uh, the death rate in acute care area is about 40 uh, 40 percent. <clears throat> so, here it is a few pictures which shows like with our field hospital, 20 bedded field hospital, and also the, our acute care unit, uh, which all made in the car park areas. <laughs> Here yeah, the first picture here showing that, that we converted the mosque uh, near the emergency department as the oxygen beds. And the second one is our COVID decision making unit that is the acute care unit one. And all this story is vividly, uh, vividly portrayed in ISA in the August, uh, August 2021 issues. So the major challenges we face in this second wave scenario is one is like we manage all the, the new staff and their unfamiliarity with the process, protocol and equipment. And sometimes they have to work in a long working hours with the PPE. Again, advanced ICU skill management and supervision is really a difficult, it was a really a difficult job. Again, uh, the equipment available, we'll never get a similar kind, uh, same uh, same brand equipment in some place. Sometimes it is a mixer of different, different equipment. So it's operational difficulty, it's a connecting difficulty, it's all another big problem. Again, the, the staff and doctors uh, on duty are getting infected frequently and there was a great difficulty to get replacement on an emergency basis. And uh, certainly like the frequent uh, patient classes is really made uh, low, uh, making a big, huge difficulty and the loss of morale of staff, doctors and bystanders. So coming to this, the next story I would like to add here, the Calicut brain crash. This happened in 2020, August 7, so are we designated as the Black Friday. Uh, and a one day Marat uh, flight, uh, flying from Dubai to Calicut, there's an India, uh, Air India Express flight crashed. Uh, on a tabletop airport, which carries uh, air, this flight carries 191 passengers on the board of these 21 killed, including pilot and co-pilot, and all victims were treated in 12 different hospitals in in Calicut and uh, uh, Malapuram districts. Out of this, uh, 47 patients were turned out in Astrum Calicut, and of this patient. 
uh, out of these 47 patients, 38 of them um, um, have the orthopedic problem. There are 74 doctors, 76 trained nurses, and 58 supporting staffs and other facilities to manage these cases. And when patients are coming the triage in the triage area, we have uh, 17 red category patient, uh, 19 yellow category patient, and seven. Uh, green category patient. In out of these 17 patients, at least 8 patients require cardiorespiratory cardio instability and require the, uh, the advanced resuscitation. And uh, 9 patients require oleum resuscitation uh, with the multi multiple fractures. And 1 patient with a polytrauma which require intubation and advanced management. And also we had 2 paraplegic patient and to para paralysis patient we have received two two uh, two patient uh, two people on uh, received uh, three or uh, three deaths on arrival that the pilot co-pilot and the child and we have like mm -hmm. one death uh, after three hours reaching the hospital and we have two covid uh, positive cases on screen so the this uh, data shows like the major injury Al almost all of them have the musculoskeletal injuries particularly the long bone injuries like femur and tibia we have the four cases of the spinal fractures with the spinal cord injury all these four is recovered almost fully so the major lesson learned in this uh, caligate plane crash is include uh, the managing uh, pandemic in PP was the biggest challenge so the one the good thing was like that plane crash happened in the evening uh, particularly 7 45 pm this is the shift change time so the manpower uh, mobilization was much easier uh, also like we have that point of care screening test for COVID is in the ED itself which made that process of sports getting very quick and fast and effective and the quality accreditation and frequent mock drills and table topics is made the disaster management is much easy. And uh, the civilian response was commendable in this scenario. At the same time, that pre-hospital care and the ambulance transport system and the patient transport system had to improve. So one more social intervention that we did in 2012 that was the biggest mock drill in India uh, that is happening in Calicut Airport. We simulated a plane crash involving 200 passengers and uh, they retrieved and transported in various hospitals in and around Calicut and uh, were like 500 volunteers, 175 ambulance, 150 patient volunteers, all are involved. So this was uh, a big, uh, this has, this created a big impact while the managing the real, real plane crash happened in 2000, uh, in 2021. So now I'm coming to, there are uh, the few, few, four, in, uh, not few, the four innovative, socially connected, community connected projects that uh, happened in, uh, happen in Kerala, one is the Angels. Angels is active network group of emergency life savers. It is a pre-hospital uh, care system, community-based pre-hospital care system with upgradation of existing facilities. It was an amazing model for uh, public-private participation in this region. And it was instrumental to save main, uh, many lives in the locality, particularly in transporting the sick patients from the on the road and also from the home uh, to the medical college and other hospitals. This data is published in the uh, disaster uh, medicine in 2016. The second <coughs> project is the emergency medicine roadshow. Uh, for, this was the first one, first, uh, first, uh, first one. This kind of happening in Kerala, or maybe in India. This is part of that MCON conference in 2013. Here is a huge awareness program which covered all 14 districts in the state, uh, all in rural and uh, urban areas. They cover take uh, 14 days. They did 102 shows 
and this uh, road show is intended to educate the common public about the need of the emergency medical care and also to sensitize the entire state and this initiate that uh, kerala conversion of casualties into former proper emergency departments another uh, project is uh, operation navajeevan that we set uh, in the covid in the in the flood first kerala flood that has happened in 2018 so what this system is a covid coordinated and systematic approach and this is a system operated through the central council and deliver the medical and non medical needs of the system to the needy in a more scientific and more appropriate way and this is this also is one of the most acceptable model of a public private participation this project was enabled with the health delivery and resource utilization and one of the finding in the study that we published in this regard in the disaster medicine journal shows like the exacerbation of the existing diseases like diabetes mellitus hypertension coronary artery disease asthma hypertension seizures are the major challenges in the relief camps and this project was later duplicated to enter district and later it's also uh, du- duplicated in uh, 2019 flats and uh, next uh, the last the fourth project is the one uh, one which uh, we did a big and a huge awareness program in kochi uh, this is the guinness world record in hands on list here by training 28523 people children in an 8 hours this first time in this uh, so while concluding we faced a sequence of major disasters in the last couple of years we have nipah virus outbreak and kerala floods in 2018 we have the second kerala flood in 2019 we had the covid pandemic first wave in 2020 on top of that we have plane crash on the same year and we have uh covid pandemic second wave in 2000 in 20 2021 so please read this 2021 so i am concluding here like that lesson learned uh, in this Uh, summarizing the lesson learned in all scenario the kerala em kerala could contribute in a commendable way in disaster in this region and the unique nature of the kerala em is the deep rooted community connect and the community based program a continuous and quality oriented training 
EM training and the empowerment made the mission successful and the national and international collaborations and partnership enhanced the process to a great extent and the most of the models that I mentioned here it can be replicated in those countries with underdeveloped emergency care system. Thank you so much for your patient listening.